Colorful Dreamer, the story of artist Henry Matisse by Marjorie Blaine Parker, illustrated by Holly Berry. Years ago, a dreamy boy gazed out his bedroom window. He lived in a dreary village in France. It was an industrial town, choked with factories, clanking looms, and smoking chimneys. There were no gardens to wander, no museums to visit, no paintings to admire. But even in this muddy, smudgy place, there were violets and butterflies in spring. There were fairs and circuses in summer. There were brilliant fabrics in every weaver's house. And the boy's dreams were full of color. His name was Henri. Henry's parents loved him very much. But sometimes they worried about him. They worried he might end up down and out. Life was difficult. They worked so hard to make a decent living, and Henry was not a hard worker. He did not excel at school. He did not excel at violin lessons. He did not, in fact, excel at much of anything, except perhaps dreaming. Henry dreamed of a, a colorful and exciting life. He dreamed of being a clown or an acrobat in a traveling show. He dreamed of being an actor or a magician on stage. Henry dreamed of being noticed. He did not dream of taking over his parents' store. Just thinking about it tied his stomach in knots. And talking to his father about it could send Henry to bed for a week. By the time Henry was a young man, his parents decided that his brother should take over the family business. And to their great relief, Henry agreed to study law in Paris. Perhaps their oldest son would not end up down and out after all. It certainly wasn't the life Henry had dreamed about. Law clerks, he discovered, spent long days copying legal documents word for word for word. When he couldn't stand the boredom for another second, Henry amused himself with his pea shooter. Soon he was an excellent shot. Growing a beard and wearing a top hat didn't help, though he looked like a law clerk. Henry couldn't bear the possibility of such an existence. Just thinking about it tied his stomach in knots. And this time, Henry ended up in bed for months in a hospital. Poor Henry. Being stuck in bed was almost worse than his job. He noticed that the man next to him kept cheerfully busy by painting small landscapes. At least it would be something to do, thought Henry. So he asked if his mother would buy him a set of paints. The moment Henry opened that box, he knew the colors. This was what he had been dreaming of. He picked up the paintbrush and was transported into paradise. Henry painted in the hospital until he was healthy enough to leave. He painted in the morning before he went to work. He painted during his lunch break. He painted in the evening after he got home from work. Henry even drew on the documents he was supposed to be copying while he was at work. It was clear he was never going to be a lawyer. Henry's parents were horrified. To be an artist meant catastrophe. It was as bad as being a clown or an acrobat. It was as bad as being an actor or a magician. Henry would end up down and out. They would have to support him for the rest of his life or he would starve. 
But Henry was a hard worker after all. He studied and practiced and experimented. He excelled at art school. Henry learned how to play the violin. He loved the music, how it calmed his nerves and exercised his hands. He learned to play it very, very well. Henry excelled at many things. It wasn't easy. For years he was hungry, very hungry. For years he struggled to provide for his family. But Henry was stubborn. He refused to give up. He dreamed colorful dreams. He painted colorful paintings. And little by little, people noticed. Henry crisscrossed the globe to Algeria, Morocco, Tahiti, Italy, America, and painted. He moved to the coast where the light was clear and the colors bright. He named his villa Le Rêve, the dream, and he filled it with birds and goldfish and flowers and fabrics. Here too he painted as more and more people noticed. Henry kept painting and years kept passing until white haired and sick he found himself back where he had started, in bed. Too weak to stand at an easel, he made cut-out collages instead. By now, the brilliant colors were too bright for his old eyes, but that didn't stop Henry. He simply wore sunglasses in his bedroom. Henry painted with colored paper. He called it drawing with scissors. And those were among his greatest creations. Henry was unstoppable. He worked as hard as any artist ever had. He worked until the very day he died. And by then, the whole world had noticed Henry Matisse.